In this learning objective, we're going to look at the stages or phases in social and environmental reporting. And I guess what we're addressing here are the clear decisions that a manager has to be able to answer uh, when attempting to undertake these kinds of disclosures. So the kinds of decisions uh, or stages that would uh, be involved in presenting this kind of reporting uh, would be why would you want to voluntarily disclose more information about this than you have to? Who are you actually going to disclose it towards? Who are your stakeholders that you're directing your disclosure towards? What forms of disclosures should you make and how, in what format? So the question why really goes directly to motivation. What are the private motivations of managers and accountants? Now, these are very difficult to, um, to deduce. Uh, but as we found from module seven, there are a number of theories that we can engage in um, to at least look at the effects. And then from the effects of these disclosures, work out what were they really working towards. So remember from module seven, we looked at a legitimacy theory, we looked at stakeholder theory in two forms. We looked at the ethical form and the managerial form. And we looked at institutional theory. And from module six, we looked at positive accounting theory, which draws on the agency, or agency theory perspective of self-interest. So what do these theories have to say in regards to social and environmental reporting? Well, Pat says managers will make disclosures that best serve their self-interest. So for example, uh, if a firm feels that um, it's going to make investors warm and fuzzy by saying all the great things that it's doing out there in the environment, uh, then they will, the manager will make that disclosure, particularly if there's a good chance that such disclosures will drive up the share price and just by co coincidence, the manager might have performance bonuses based on that share price. Uh, legitimacy theory states that the disclosures will be made that will enhance community perceptions of legitimacy around that organisation, or at the very least, reduce concerns about the legitimacy of that organisation. And I'm just wondering whether those sorts of concerns uh, were really prominent in the mind of Westpac executives when they decided to no longer um, make loans to mining companies. Stakeholder theory, uh, at least in the managerial branch, suggests that disclosures will be made that will be seen as positive and beneficial by its most powerful stakeholders. And institutional theory suggests that organisations will start to mimic the disclosures of other successful firms in that same industry. Now, who would you target these disclosures towards? Now, each firm has, has uh, different stakeholders, but each firm will also know who are the most powerful stakeholders. So quite often, these forms of disclosures, are, even though they're publicly available, are uh, really aimed at specific groups of people. Um, we see now that, there are, that activist groups in the environment are becoming very influential. And it may well be that disclosures are made with them in mind. And here's a photo of recent protest um, directly targeting the executives of Westpac Bank. Now, what to disclose is really a case by case basis. Again, what you choose to disclose is really a function of who you're aiming your disclosures at and what are your motivations. And how? Uh, there's no doubt that there is a, a series of guidance or guidelines on how to report. Triple bottom line is probably the most prescriptive, although the more recent um, guideline on social reporting called integrated reporting uh, is gaining more favour than triple bottom line uh, currently. 
Uh, but we are not looking at a situation at the moment similar to financial reports. Uh, <clears throat> they're not prescriptive. There are no um, accounting standards that you must follow. So a lot of freedom at the moment is available to managers and accountants who seek to make disclosures on social and environmental issues. So that's a quick run through the various steps and decisions that managers would need to follow, the sorts of things that they need to identify. Uh, in the final presentation, we're going to look at some of the current issues in social and environmental reporting. I'll see you then.